Okay. All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbeen.com. Today we'll continue our discussion about a Vipadil, and I need to get rid of these teeth before I can talk more. So give me one second. Okay, so uh, happy Halloween. I hope that this year was not the whole year of Halloween and we were only scared for one day and that was enough. Um, hopefully you would re relax a little bit, see me scaring you and then let's talk about it. So the discussion that I wanna do today is about the Aviptadil. So let's do this. So the... Um, here, let's look at Luffy once more. So this is Luffy. Luffy as usual. Of course, without Luffy, a Dracula is not a Dracula. Yes, Luffy? Are you going to howl today as well? So that is Luffy. All right. <clears throat> Very good. So, Puya uh, Dhagni Mubarki says that, Dear Mubin, we submitted our call to action to WHO. Let's pray. Yeah, it is kind of sad situation that for WHO to do anything, we have to pray instead of actually um, go on a scientific merit. So that is a sad part of it. But uh, good luck to you, Puya. Good work. And I hope that that works. Tell me a little bit more about what is it that you have uh, submitted and what is it that you are expecting from them to do. So now that I am a Dracula, I have just lost my teeth because they were not letting me speak correctly. So uh, once again, happy Halloween. I wish that this was not the whole year of Halloween and this was just one day and we were done. But uh, this, the whole year has been a scary year for us. Let's start. The discussion I want to do today is about the uh, Aviptadil. We have talked about Aviptadil in detail in past. The the video for that is here. So this is that video. I have the link in the description. So I have gone in detail about the mechanism of action of Aviptadil. I don't want to go in detail again. However, I want to talk about some of the top line results from the um, Aviptadil trials that are going on that are interesting for us to see. I had talked about them in a question answer session and that topic kind of got embedded in there and people kept asking me that, hey, have you heard about Aviptadil? So I thought that I would give it a separate uh, place as well. So here we are. Welcome to everyone and let us start a discussion. If you see here, this is a report that I wanna show. It is a preprint and this is brief report of a rapid clinical recovery from critical COVID-19 uh, with respiratory failure in a lung transplant patient. So we're gonna talk about this. Then we are going to talk about this mechanism of action quickly, which we have done before as well. Then we'll talk about FDA grants, the um, inhaled Aviptadil. So there is not only infusion, there is inhaled Aviptadil as well that has been granted uh, approval for use. Then there are a couple of clinical trials that I'm, uh, I have in the links. One is for the inhaled one, and the other one is for infused one. And then finally, this is the uh, article that is by the NeuroRx and Relief Pharmaceuticals. So Relief Pharmaceutical, I believe, is a European company, and NeuroRx is a US company, and they are working together. Relief is the original patent holder, I believe, and NeuroRx is partnering with them to produce RLF-100 or Aviptadil. So with this, let's start our discussion. So the discussion is, you have probably seen this part before, so I'm just gonna go over this very fast. We know that the Aviptadil, so I'm not gonna spend the whole time again for the same video. This is the video that was done before. In this, we have introduced what Aviptadil is. Aviptadil is a vasoactive intestinal peptide. So it is a hormone, you can say, which is produced in our body. It was uh, observed to be present in the intestine first, but it has been actually seen to be produced by many, many cells, 
including immune cells as well. Then we looked at its various functions. And if you see here, there are functions in the brain, then there are functions on the GIT and the functions on the immune system. Again, I'm not going into detail. The detail is present in the other video. Again, if you see here, functions on the GIT and heart, what is more interesting for us is this part of the function that is what is important for COVID-19. And that function is that, look, in the COVID-19, there are inside our alveoli. Alveoli are the final places where the gaseous exchange is occurring. Inside there, there are two types of primary cells that make the respiratory wall or membrane. Uh, one is called type two pneumocyte, this big one. They are about 5% in this whole structure. And the other one are called type one pneumocyte. Type two pneumocyte, these big cells, are responsible to produce surfactant. Surfactant is the fluid which is present in the gaseous system and it helps for the gas exchange. And secondly, it actually reduces the resistance or the um, water layers collapsibility so it keeps the alveoli open. So it, the pneumocytes produce surfactant plus pneumocytes produce other type one pneumocyte as well. So they actually produce other cells as well. So you can imagine that if a pneumocyte is damaged, then what will happen is surfactant will not be produced plus the other type one pneumocyte are not going to be produced. So this whole structure becomes risky and it becomes damaged. And unfortunately, the SARS-CoV-2 actually attacks the pneumocytes. The pneumocytes have an abundant amount of ACE2 receptors on them. SARS-CoV-2 comes in and attaches to them and infects the pneumocyte and then destroys them, which then in turn reduces the surfactant production plus reduces the production of other cells. Fortunately, these type 2 pneumocyte also have a Viptadil receptors. So when a Viptadil is present and when it connects to these uh, pneumocytes, it does a bunch of things which are really important. And the thing that is most important, if I have it here, here. So imagine that this is the type 2 pneumocyte. When a type 2 pneumocyte is infected, then the natural killer cell, and we have done these discussions a lot in the past, when the type 2 pneumocyte is infected, then what would happen is that the uh, natural killer cell will come to the type 2 cell and ask it to kill itself. It would cause the activation of caspases, which would then cause the cell to commit suicide. And that cell that would now be destroyed has become non-functional. Secondly, when it is destroyed, it has released a lot of, a bun a lot of debris from it, which would cause inflammatory response and immune response. So we don't want these cells to die. So what happens is when a Viptadil is present, it attaches with VPAC1 receptor on the type 2 pneumocyte and it prevents them from dying. So when it prevents them from dying, it prevents number one from the important cells to go away. Secondly, it prevents the local debris to be collected. Thirdly, because of that prevention, it prevents the immune system's reaction and it prevents the edema to occur in that area. So it kind of stabilizes the respiratory epithelium and it stabilizes the type 2 pneumocyte and gives them the power to defend themselves and not just die. The result of that is reduced inflammation in the respiratory system. In addition to this, type 2, uh, the Viptadil, if you see here, these v, VP, VIP receptors here, 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 these receptors are also responsible to cause the immune system cells to modulate and balance themselves. And please remember VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, the drug that we are talking about, the substance that we are talking about, it is not only released by intestine, actually the immune cells themselves release this substance as well. In the presence of this substance, what happens is that the innate arm calms down. And I had done this discussion before, CXCL2 receptor, various chemokine cy or cytokine and chemokine release is reduced, including Rantes, which is Lironlimab's area. So this actually, a Viptadil actually kind of has 
have a function of Lironle map in it as well. In addition to that, it kind of brings the naive T cells towards the T regulatory cells as well. And T regulatory cell in turn will cause the immune system to be calmed down. It also modulates the, the plasma cells. It modulates the cytotoxic T cells as well. The end result is Evipterdil actually prevents respiratory distress and respiratory inflammation and immune responses. On top of all of that, Evipterdil is easily penetrating the lung tissue and is abundantly present in the lung tissue when given. So all of these are good things. So continuing on, we have done this talk before in the other um, video. We have talked about this as well. What I wanted to do today is the following. I wanted to look at this one case study. And I know that last time when I had talked about one case study, um, one of the, remember that person who has been stalking me, he even sent me a message this morning. So eventually I had to block him on my cell phone as well. I do not know that they did not understand that no means no, I don't want to talk with you. And then I don't want to talk with you. So anyways, this is one person's uh, case. But this is a very, very important case. Why this is important is that this is a 55, 54 year old person who had double lung transplant. Both of his lungs were transplanted and they were in the rejection phase. What happens is that when we get somebody else's lungs or other tissue in us, our body takes that as foreign tissue as well and kind of attacks it and tries to destroy it. So what we have to do is we have to keep our, our body's immune system in check. We have to make sure that the, the transplant matches with our body as much as possible. Then we keep the immune system in check as well. So it does not reject the transplant and does not kill that tissue. And this patient, unfortunately, was in the rejection as well, which was happening through the antibodies. And on top of this, unfortunately, this person developed COVID-19 as well and he has renal failure, and he has other comorbidities. So quite a serious case. Compound the issue with this, that he was not able to get other medications because of his comorbidities. And the medication for COVID-19 that he was getting were not working. So if you see here, they say that 54 year old patient suffering antibody mediated rejection of his double lung transplant and then he say he received and with respiratory failure refractory to all currently available therapies. Refractory means in medical terms is resistant to other drugs. So he was not responding to them. And what they did was they gave him, they gave him three infusions of Aviptadil. Look at the magic here. Three infusions of Aviptadil. 24 hours after the last infusion, the third infusion, 24 hours after the third in infusion, he, has sub he had substantial improvement in his oxygen levels. And I'll show you how they were. And his radiological uh, appearance improved as well. His lungs started improving. And within one week after, after that, he was actually discharged to go home. He was discharged to go home. So once again, I was going to talk about that uh, person who was talking to me and say that I had talked about one person's, uh, one person's case in the past. And he had said, this does not rise up to a study. Why are you talking about one person? And look, this is a scientific evidence. This evidence would encourage someone to try it more and see if this can work. If eventually the science rejects it, the process rejects it, then it is rejected. But everything that is tested is tested one by one. And this is a very decent display of the, the result. So now if we continue, uh, let me show you actually a little bit of this as well. So this is the case report here. And if this case report was not useful, then they would not have printed it as well. So this case is, report is actually by Houston Method Methodist Pulmonary Transplant Center in the in Houston, Texas. So Jihad, George is Yusuf, Faisal, Zahiruddin, Mukhtar, Al-Saidi, Simon Yao, Ahmed, Howard J. Wang, 
and Jonathan. So these are the folks who are doing this. What I wanted to show you in this one, in this case report, is the following. Look at this. This is before infusion. This is his x-ray. So if you see here, these whitish things, whitish areas, these are the uh, signs of pneumonia. And if you see here, this is the 24 hours post third infusion of Aviptadil. And if you see the lungs are clearing up, they are becoming better. And this is a person who has transplanted lungs. And this is a person whose lungs were already being rejected. That means immune system was already there kicking the lungs. And on top of that, COVID-19 arrived as well. And then Aviptadil came in and helped. Same is the case here. This is a CT scan of the lungs. So if you see here, these are the whitish appearances. And then if you see here, they have reduced. And this is another CT scan of the lung. If you see these whitish areas here and then over here, do you see they have gone? So that is the, that is the improvement that he had. In addition to that, if you see his partial pressure of oxygen and fraction of oxygen, 146 went back to 285 greater than 300 is what we would want to have so he was really down and then came back up similarly his oxygen saturation was 98 early on in the beginning then went back to 95 but look at this he was being given 30 liter per minute oxygen and now he's been given two liter per minute oxygen and still he was at 95 huge improvement so this was the, um, so I, I have the, disc, uh, the link in the um, description so you can read it as well. So this is one that is reported. The second thing that I would like to discuss is this top line results from one of the open label prospective study as well. So this study is still going on. However, they have some results that are available and they have shared them. So these are, This is the one. So here they had 45 ICU, actually 21 and 24. Yeah, so 45. 45 patients who were all in the ICU, who were all deteriorating, who were all in a bad shape. And what happened was they gave them a Viptadil. 21 of them received a Viptadil. Other 24 of them received standard care. The whole data is still to be made available, but this is the data they've given so far. All of them had severe comorbidities that made them ineligible for randomized trial. So they did an open label trial with them. They told them that we're going to give you this drug and then administered it. And look at the results. Aviptadil patients now they're all ICU bound patients. They're all patients with comorbidities. They're all patients in a severe state. 81% survived versus 70%, 17% survival in standard care. 81% versus 17%. And they say that there is a nine time, nine fold increased probability of survival and recovery. So if you see here, Overall, 81% of RLF-100, RLF-100 is, is a commercial name for this, treated patients survived beyond 60 days compared to 17% control patients. Patients treated with RLF-100 demonstrated a nine-fold increased probability of survival and recovery from respiratory failure with a high degree of statistical significance. This one part is not very comfortable with me yet. A uh, high degree of statistical significance probably means not statistically significant, but without having that data, I cannot really say. They are saying that we are preparing the data and we will publish it soon, but still this data that they have given so far looks very good. So this is the Viptadil, which is actually doing magic as well. And I wanted to make sure that I give you an update about the effect of this on patients. So this is the discussion for today. Um, hope you're doing good. So let's look at a couple of comments here and then we would stop. And as usual, please uh, like, subscribe and share. And if you wanted to donate or support my work, 
there is a link in the description for donations. So uh, Lewis Friedman says, question, how do we know the efficacy of inhaled avipradil? So actually, the inhaled avipradil, let me share my screen once more. If you see here, this is the inhaled avipradil that has gotten the approval. And they are still going through the study. This is the intravenous one, and this is inhaled avipradil. They're still going through the study. The data is still not available. It is 288 participants that they are working with, and data is being completed, or study is being completed in August 1, 2021. So not available yet, but I would hope that this would have good results as well. Otherwise, they would have stopped it. So good question, Louis. Uh, the answer is yet not known. Uh, again, for, for me, this is a great thing that there is something that FDA has approved for emergency use authorization and has approved to be fast tracked and it is uh, showing results as well. Okay, so uh, So there is one more uh, question that is around the surfactant. So there are other drugs as well that increase the production of surfactant and they have their effect as well. However, in case of avipradil, it is not only helping to produce more surfactant, it is keeping the pneumo type 2 pneumocyte safe and stable as well. It is keeping the immune system modulated as well. So it has multiple actions, not just production of surfactant. So cool. So this is where we are at. Once again, thank you very much. I hope I scared you today. And uh, please stay safe and happy. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I would see you on Monday. Bye-bye for now. Happy Halloween.